I lead the data analytics practice at Infosys. Uh, 5 p.m. on day three, yet another AI topic. I'm not going to bore with that. Rather, I will tell some of the real life experiences on how we have brought our AI assets and how we are delivering value to our clients leveraging Infosys Topaz. So this is the AI first capability that we have launched under the brand name Infosys Topaz. It has 12,000 plus assets which includes data and analytics assets. Uh, it includes your AI models, uh, your data artifacts, your data monitoring, data governance, and so on and so forth. And this has been a work of last one plus year at Infosys where we have bought all these experiences under a single umbrella of Infosys Topaz. So let me unpack what Infosys Topaz is, right? So it is an AI first architecture approach where you are not thinking about AI as an after the fact, where you have developed your models, where you have developed your pipelines, and then thinking about how to infuse AI. Rather, how we are going to leverage AI at the core of data, at the core of your processing, at the core of data processing, AI processing, business processing. So let me talk about the AI principles that we adopted to develop the Infosys Topaz first. First of all, we realized there's going to be AI twin for everyone, and this everyone includes the personas in the business, in the IT, it could be your business manager, salesperson, marketing person. It could be IT ops person. So we eventually will need AI twin for everyone. So with that persona in mind, we have created a capability that can be applied in many business and IT context. The second is poly AI. We also understand that eventually there will be many type of models. You have models from open source, you have generative AI models, you have your own internally developed machine learning models. And all of this has to coexist. So how we are going to architecture it together to make it coexist along with your you know, existing landscape, existing data and analytics landscape. So that is the second principle we have taken into consideration. Th second, uh, third one is the narrow transformers. So we realize while we are trying to build a large scale analytics capability, there also going to be need for data for narrow transformer. Narrow transformers are your point use cases, your point transformers, which are very specific to a particular industry or a particular enterprise. So that is what we are calling narrow transformers. So there need to be space while we try to create a generative AI umbrella. Narrow transformers are going to be key for any enterprise. In the flow data analytics, which means that real time data analytics, or you can say, you know, when the data is coming, how can you make sure that you are applying analytics AI in the flow rather than doing it as a batch processing? Responsible by design, ethical and responsible by design, that's another fact. And last is, most important is AI first skill set, right? How do you build skills in your company, in your vendors, in your ecosystem? So these were the principles. What we laid out was left and right brain, how human works. So in your enterprise, you start with a structured, unstructured data. You start with your knowledge and connected data that will surface up. Your structured and unstructured data will surface up and become your knowledge base. On your knowledge base, you'll apply analytics and AI products. Where you develop nudges, uh, for example, when you're having, sensing a data, from your sales, whether sales are going up and down, how can you try to relate whether the, what is the root cause for that going up and down today? Business people have to go to a lot of uh, reports to figure it out, whether my sales are up and down, whether it is because of promotion, marketing event, weather conditions, so on and so forth. AI can help you to uncover all of that without someone manually doing it. So that is the nudges and, you know, uh, that we have tried to build in. Finally, AI first experience where we are building the cognitive intelligence when the consumers are consuming your product. It could be your product, it could be services. How can you bring AI at the last layer? And that is where generative AI is becoming very you know, key here because that can bring a good use case of leveraging your data to drive consumer behavior and consumer interaction. So this is our principles based on which we created Infosys Topaz. As I mentioned, uh, we are looking to infuse the AI in the data at the core. Some of the things that we realize uh, are the six steps in the, any data product, right? It starts with data analyzer, where we are trying to build auto discovery data, as well as you know, uh, target state disposition recommendation. What it means is that instead of someone manually going and doing the data discovery, how can you discover the pattern automatically and surface it up for the users? Data streams, you are trying to bring autonomous data engineering. So one point in exam, uh, case is for a leading company, we were able to cut down the autonomous, uh, bringing the data into the enterprise from 10 weeks to 10 days. So whenever they are bringing new data from external party to internal into their warehouse, it was taking 10 weeks, we are able to cut it down to 10 days. And that is done through autonomous data engineering, where it is able to uncover the patterns in the data and suggest what is the right data pipeline to be built for you. Similarly, on data governance and privacy, we have built a smart DQ solution. I will double click on that in a bit. Uh, and AI factories, that is very key here. When you're trying to develop so many models from open source, from chat GPT, from internally, 
it's very important to govern this and we are able to create ml ops and ai factory at a scale where we can deploy thousands of models hundreds of models in a you know very short term uh, time frame and finally data ops and uh, data analyzer where we are going to bring uh, infosys data operations workbench which is going to monitor your data pipeline uh, where the failures are going to happen and what are going to be the nudges that are going to be created out of the failure so your operation teams are not figuring out where the job failure happened rather than it can work in the self heal process so these are some of the you know capabilities that we have bundled under infosys to pass coming to its application in the real life there are two parts right as i mentioned one is the it other is business so these are some of the it use cases that are already running on gen ai today uh, so this is not something that we are trying to look for tomorrow but today we are uh, leveraging this gen ai capabilities some of the ones which i'm going to talk about touch about is this code explainability and searchability this is very unique in a way because you might have heard copilot right which is able to generate the codes but not a lot of uh, capability exists for code searchability right for example in your it teams when you are trying to create assets your it team should be able to go back and figure out where does a particular module reside where is my date calling function reside what are the arima functions that are existing in my it landscape we have created capability where your it team can go and do a code searchability in the it landscape in your existing landscape so you are not looking for open source but within your it landscape how can you do code searchability so this is just one application of gen ai use cases in the it ops other one i want to talk about is the application downtime prediction right where you can leverage the server data server logs your ticket and trying to triage it to figure out when a particular downtime may happen right because of your server getting over utilized or certain external conditions happening in the server it can tell you when the downtime is going to happen another use case i'm going to talk about is ticket routing and profiling right so it is very important people who come from it ops background will know that any time you are doing analysis of tickets trying to find the root cause many time root cause lies somewhere else than what is mentioned in the ticket so we are trying to figure out that leveraging gen ai capability where you can triage your ticket information along with user inputs along with ticket closure comments to figure out what is the real reason for your ticket to be you know opened in the first place and how to fix it so you are trying to uh, address the root cause of the problem not just fixing the you know surface problem problem on the surface so those are some of the use cases that we are leveraging uh, you know just using the generative ai this is the application of generative ai or you know rather uh, ai and generative ai in the business use case so we realize there are a lot of reports that are there in the any you know clients landscape any enterprise landscape where people have to go to hundreds and thousands of reports we are able to uh, leverage generative ai capability to create a summary of existing report so instead of someone going to hundreds and thousands of the report what you see at the bottom of this is a summary that is created by gen ai capability it is a capability that can help your business users not to go through hundreds and thousands of lines of report rather take the business decision quick so when they come 8 am in the morning there is a report that tell them that sales are down in new york because there was a promotion run by the competition so on so forth so that is the power of leveraging ai and gen ai uh, and uh, using it in your uh, you know daily reporting so it is a intelligent layer sitting on top of your existing reports that can create uh, some you know that kind of intelligence for your business to leverage for your uh, business consumption of the reports this is another example of how i was mentioning about data quality and master data harmonization how we are leveraging gen ai and machine learning it is a combination of both the models so there is a big problem in the industry where you are having external data internal data where you are you know kind of converging both of it and trying to make sense of the data big part of the effort goes in how do you harmonize the data right when your data is coming from external party it is at a different level different granularity versus your internal data may be at different granularity how do you bring all of it together for you to draw insights and a lot of effort is wasted for creating mapping files creating manual efforts we have created again machine learning based algorithms that can help you to avoid all those tasks cut down the task for your insights where all this data can be harmonized in the near real time basis and created that solution on top of infosys topaz uh, another capability that we have created is data quality for example which is again finding a needle in a haystack kind of a problem where you are trying to go through your hundreds and thousands of sales record and figuring out that sales has dropped in a particular store because one item was misplaced so identifying those kind of issues is another challenge which again is gen ai is going to be very helpful in that so we are using this capabilities of gen ai and ml combined together to solve this data quality and data harmonization problem 
this is again one of the key offering of our Infosys Topaz uh, you know, suite of algorithms. I will quickly touch upon one of the industry solution uh, that we have built called Supply Chain AI Cloud. Uh, this is our offering specifically for supply chain. Similar to this, we have offering on the consumer intelligence cloud, on the you know, pharmacy and so on and so forth. But I'm just going to touch upon one of them. The foundation of all of this is very same, uh, which is basically built on our AI first principles, Infosys Topaz. But this is where we are building uh, in the supply chain, which is happened to be very complex because you're de dealing with a lot of external and internal data sources. It is very critical for you to get a response at the right time. So one of the key things that any supply chain managers are struggling is, how do I know before the event is happening? After the event has happened, obviously they are reacting to it. So one of the solution we have built was supply chain early warning. So leveraging your weather data, your geopolitical data, your local newsfeed data, and triangulate that with your point of interest. It could be your supplier location, it could be your warehouse location, it could be your stores in the downtown, right, that you are, that is struggling. And create a supply chain early warning saying that a particular purchase order or particular shipment may be delayed because there is certain event happening or there is certain weather conditions and so on and so forth. So which gives a predictive power to the supply chain users rather than they're reacting to it after the event has happened. So just one of the use case of how you can leverage AI ML capability in your supply chain powering, you know, uh, powered by Infosys Topaz. So this is a double click on the supply chain solution assets that is powering uh, the entire supply chain intelligence cloud. So you see these five key blocks, uh, obviously interconnected supply chain ecosystem. That is starting with the core foundation of supply chain data model, auto intelligent tagging, sustainability is another key thing that we have factored into our you know, base data model. On top of that, you've got intelligence knowledge graph, which is basically your knowledge graph are you know, your Neo4j kind of databases that can do correlation between different events, unconnected events, right, or disconnected events. It can intelligent, intelligently do the connection between all these events. So that is the intelligence knowledge graph on top of which we have got AI agents and services. So these AI agents are your narrow transformers, if you can call it, or point solutions that can do, for example, content topic, it can do logistic optimization, concurrent planning, and so on. One of the thing I talked about, supply chain disruption and ETA prediction. So these are some of the agent services that we have built. And then we orchestrate this at a scale. So we are not talking about doing it for one warehouse or one you know, uh, DC. We are doing it at a scale of global, right? So we are working with a Fortune, top 50 company where we are doing this at a scale globally for their 120 warehouses uh, and uh, their 50 plus manufacturing plants. So doing at a scale is key because each of these uh, systems are at different level of maturity. So how to get this data and make sure that all of this information is flowing consistently into your data lake and building this engine on top of that. So intelligent orchestration become very critical because the journey orchestration, your event sensors, your cognitive AOS, API services, all of it has to work together in conjunction. And finally, surfacing it up for your business processes or business decision-making processes, where you've got KPIs, logistic decision dashboards, and sustainability KPI, and so on and so forth, which is a suite of you know, your consumption KPIs that can power your business decisions. So this is how one of the intelligent cloud, which is our supply chain AI cloud, is working and bringing to life the Infosys Topaz for supply chain intelligence cloud. These are some of the cognitive core solutions. This is too descriptive, so I will, I will not bother you, but let me take a couple of examples which are very powerful here. Uh, number case, one case study is expected delivery window you know, prediction. So this is, we are doing for one of the largest package delivery company in the world, uh, delivering millions of packages every day. Uh, one of the key problem they have obviously is doing the ETA prediction. So how do you predict ETA for you know, your packages, which are individual packages? Uh, we built this machine learning algorithm on top of Databricks, uh, where Databricks has been our key partner and included their uh, external conditions like weather and internal conditions which are basic delivery time, so on and so forth, their labor you know, window, what is the time window that they can deliver and all of that. And use that to predict when a particular, what particular package will be delivered when. So then they can do the backward planning of their labor and your warehouse DC, your, uh, you know, your workforce optimization average can be driven out of that. And they can also tell their consumers what is the right ETA. Similar to what a lot of you know, enterprise in e-commerce like Amazon does it, every enterprise want to emulate it and want to become more accurate in their prediction. So this is the one example where we are delivering on top of Databricks, one of the AI example. Other one I want to talk about is demand forecasting at scale. 
So this is a very complex problem. People who come from industry will realize demand forecasting doing at scale is very challenging because each of your demand forecastable units are behaving differently. Your products may behave differently. So we have been able to create this solution at scale where we are leveraging the power of AI. And this is again built on Infosys Topaz running in uh, eight to around eight of our clients building at scale daily point of sale data that is coming from the third party like retailers combining that with your shipment data internal data and creating a forecast that is for next day next week and next month so trying to come up with those kind of forecasts which are so accurate on a daily basis on a weekly and monthly basis at scale for your hundreds and thousands of product is what we have been able to do uh, with one of the leading cpg clients One of the other use case I want to talk about uh, here is the concurrent planning. Uh, concurrent planning basically is, uh, we are doing this for one of the leading uh, uh, high-tech company which manufactures mobiles and other products. Uh, it's very important that you tie your supply and demand together. So at times we are doing demand forecasting, supply forecasting separately. We have been able to combine leveraging Infosys to pass both demand and supply and create a solution that can be rendered to your business where we are doing at scale both the demand planning and supply planning together. So your demand and supply planners are not acting in silos, rather bringing the entire ecosystem together to create a single view of your, what you need to procure and what you need to supply to your uh, retailers. So this is another example of leveraging uh, data analytics at core at leveraging Infosys to pass.